can just take that. Hey guys, welcome. I'm Matt Pittman of Meat Church. Welcome to my outdoor kitchen right here in sweltering Texas. Uh, yes, we're outdoors, even though this looks like we're indoors. So deep in the heart of Texas in Waxahachie, Texas here uh, for our next installment of Traeger Kitchen Live. Super excited to have you guys today. This is my fourth episode. Uh, huge thank you to Traeger for giving us an outlet to help come uh, be with you guys and share our passion for teaching. So teaching is what I'm most passionate about. I teach right here in my outdoor kitchen. Obviously, that's not been an option the past few months. So uh, I always say that nobody's doing what Traeger is doing in the outdoor cooking world. And this goes to show it. I don't know any other outdoor grilling companies bringing you a weekly live lesson uh, on how to cook. And so super stoked that they have uh, extended that invitation to me again to come share with you guys a couple uh, of my recipes that I think you guys will enjoy. So with that said, what are we in for uh, today? Today, very, very near and dear to my heart, um, we're going to learn, you're going to learn, uh, my barbacoa recipe and then jalapeno poppers, which if you follow me on Instagram, at Meat Church, you know that those are both things that we cook quite frequently. And uh, I thought I'd take a minute to kind of tell you, you know, why I came up with the recipe that I came up with for barbacoa and why I asked Traeger if we could share that with you guys today. Barbacoa is extremely popular in Texas. And what is barbacoa right off the bat? It's smoked, well, it's beef cheek that's typically braised or cooked really slowly. Uh, and we'll, we'll go over that in a little bit when we get to that specifically. Um, but if you live here, it's you know pretty common that come a Saturday, uh, you might go to a small taco joint and would be very common uh, to eat uh, barbacoa on a fresh corn tortilla. And my wife, Tracy, is the one that really got me into eating barbacoa. When I first tried it, I wasn't a big fan of it. And it was just because I had some that wasn't prepared like really, really well, to be honest with you. Uh, but, you know, I kind of fell in love with it and then thought I want to put my own smoky uh, twist on it because with anything that I make, uh, I try to add a smoke element to it. So traditionally, um, barbacoa is made by taking an entire uh, head of a you know like a steer and smoking it in the ground that was the old school way to make it now it's very common for people to braise the meat so I see a lot of people using crock pots and things like that we don't like to cook indoors in my family so what I want to do is again add some sort of smoke element so I'm going to teach you to smoke uh, and then to braise uh, the meat until it's super tender and makes an amazing it's supposed to be breakfast but tonight we're going to have it for supper and then Traeger always asks me like what sides do we want to add what do you want to have with it? And uh, I don't like to go for wimpy sides. So I said, well, let's go with our jalapeno poppers, which go hand in hand. I'm going to tell you quite a bit about those, lots of different ways to make them. And we've got some rolling over here on our Ranger right now. I could uh, give you guys a little sneak peek if you want, because they're looking mighty fine already. So not to, not to cut ahead or anything, but these are looking unreal. I was checking them out just before we, we went live. So I can't wait to, to dive into those here in just a little bit. I'm actually going to tell you how I made these right up top. Trusty little uh, Traeger Ranger here. I wanted to showcase this today because this is a really versatile grill that we use for a lot of things. So a lot of people use this for its portability, whether you're going tailgating or you're going camping. Um, I like it because it's a nice small grill that I can do smaller type stuff on. Uh, it also has uh, the ability to sear so for those of you that like to make steaks i like to go high heat and sear my steaks off in that so more about that later but anyway let's jump in so let's get going got a lot of stuff out here going on let me make sure i'm hydrated first and i water the water's strong today Whew. hard water down here in texas all right First up, we're going to cover our jalapeno poppers, and then we're going to get into barbacoa. And I've already, you know, shown you the final product, but let's let's get after it. All right, so jalapeno popper. You know, we're going to start with fresh jalapenos, which we've got quite a few here. You can use different peppers. I like a jalapeno because it's not that hot to begin with. Um, but I'm going to show you some some tips and tricks to kind of dictate how hot you make this, how hot or not hot you make it. We can actually make this to where it's not hot at all, 
um, or we can, you know, kind of keep some heat in it. So I'll give you that flexibility, you know, depending on what you and your guests like. So we've washed these off already. I'll tell you everything I use, what my tools are, because we get lots of questions. Feel free to ask questions, put them in the comments. Uh, I've got my buddy Robinson Barbecue here is going to read your questions to me and we'll answer those uh, throughout the broadcast. Uh, but first off, we're using a, we always get asked this, this is a rosewood block uh, cutting board and then I use Messermeister knives. So that's kind of what we're rolling with today. All right, lots of ways to do this. I'm going to start with, this is a pretty big jalapeno and I'm going to cut the end off of it. We'll do that on a few of these, and I'll show you what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep these about the same length. I'll uh, hold those up and show you. Now, you don't have to do that. I'm going to tell you right now, There's when, anytime I post my jalapeno poppers, there's a lot of uh, experts out there that like to tell me how I should do it. Here's my deal with barbecue. There's no right or wrong way. You do you. You get to choose how you do this. I'm going to show you a way that I like, but if you want to go a different route, totally cool. Some people like to cook these whole. I'm actually going to have these. We'll get into that. So I've cut these to where they're all kind of a similar length. I've kind of cut, you can see I cut a little bit off. You can cook these whole, you can core this out and put your stuffing inside of it and go whole. I'm going a different route with it and I'll show you that. Okay, so now that I've cut the end off, I'm gonna cut them in half. All right, so here's a little tip. Inside the jalapeno, you're gonna see seeds, and I'm gonna call this the stem. That's where the heat lies. The heat lies in the stem, not the seeds. That's kind of a misnomer. So uh, if you want these hot, then don't take a lot of stuff out of it. If you want them to be on the, more on the mild side, then kind of clean them out. So I'm gonna take this little butter knife, to, this little tool I'm gonna use to remove the inside, and I'll just kind of show you. So the stem that runs right here, that's where the heat is. So on this one where I'm removing most of it, this one shouldn't be that hot. If you like some heat, then don't remo remove all this. Like I said, just come in here and kind of get some of that membrane out. And you know, the more, the more of this piece you leave right here, the hotter they're gonna be. And I'm not gonna make you wait for, on me to do 10 of these, but I'm gonna do a handful of them. So here's an example, one that'd be kind of warm. If you leave that much in it, it's gonna have a little bite to it. So that gives you a little flexibility to make some warmer ones, some cooler ones, whatever you wanna do. This is the method that I prefer and you're gonna see why when I, when I finish it. But like I said, if you wanna leave it whole, that's totally fine. Uh, some people don't like to cut the end off because they think that the cream cheese runs out. But you know, if you look at the ones I've already cooked, no cream cheese has come out of that. Now, it doesn't mean that it couldn't, but due to the temperature that I'm cooking at, and you're, if you're careful with it, you won't run it all out of there. But like I said, some people like to keep this cap on here, or they just kind of cut the top off because they just don't want the cheese to run out of this, this final product. But as you can see there, this one's ready to go, and I think, it, I think it's just fine. All right. Heck, I'll do a couple more. We got time. You guys are enjoying a cold drink at home, I hope. We're gonna spend the next hour together, have a good time. What pellets are you using? The question is what pellets am I using? Uh, we actually have hickory pellets in here today. Hickory is my favorite all purpose. Well, if I could only ever buy one pellet, I would buy hickory. Uh, they're fairly heavy on the smoke side, but really it's because um, I grew up, my granddaddy's farm in Alabama had hickory on it, so it's kind of, I don't know, a sentimental thing, and so I really like cooking with it, so that's, that's usually what I do. But you could use a lot of things. You could use pecan, um, you know, you could, I mean, honestly, with a, with, a, with a popper like this, you've got a ton of options. You could go with a fruit wood. I like some smoke taste in mine. I'm gonna let that sit there and cool off so I can quality control, make sure it's good. What are you hydrating with? What am I hydrating with? Um, I said it was water. Tito's and lemonade. It's hot here in Texas. Can you use other peppers other than jalapenos? Can you use other peppers other than jalapenos? Absolutely. Uh, I like using like a big poblano, more of a smoky type flavor, not as much heat. You can use any peppers you want. These are a great 
bite size. This is a great appetizer, but you can use any pepper you like. I encourage people to kind of play around with them and try different things. Okay, let's make our filling. This filling is going to be very basic. We've got one block of cream cheese. This is softened, and when I say softened, I've left it out of the fridge for you know the past 45 minutes, and it's it's like 100 degrees here today, so it's going to soften pretty quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our all-purpose rub in it, which is the gospel, aka the best color in barbecue. I'm going to open the big side, and how much am I going to put in it? I don't know. Enough. Quite a bit, and then I'm going to mix it up. Now you can do. You can put a lot of stuff in this. Again, if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see our favorite poppers really come with, uh, we saute chorizo in a cast iron skillet. We drain the fat off and then we'll dump the chorizo in here and that makes these pretty meaty. And it's a, a super hearty popper when you're done with it. So that's a, that's a really good option. Today we just wanted to, um, we wanted to stick with kind of what I'm known for. I, I always tell people, I'm trying to show you a very straightforward or simplistic way to make amazing food. So there's not a lot of ingredients in this and it's gonna be super good. I like the heat, but I like the cool side of the cream cheese. So I'm not gonna lie, when I eat sushi, I love a Philadelphia roll because I love cream cheese. I like the coolness of that. I think it complements the heat uh, in the pepper really well. So I think these are just fine. You can use, uh, again, you can use our gospel, uh, also our honey rubs like honey hog, uh, D's nuts, honey pecan, honey hog hot. Those are all really good choices. So we just put, I don't know, we probably put at least a tablespoon in here. And sometimes I'll get asked like, hey, is that too salty? Because we're gonna top, these are also seasoned with, with um, cream cheese. No, they're not too salty. And again, you just go to what you like. So here's what we're left with. You've got just a nice mixture in there. Once you put a seasoning, in your cream cheese, you'll probably never make them without a seasoning again, in my opinion. Okay. A suggestion from Dusty says you definitely need an Ain't Mad About It t-shirt. <laughs> Dusty says I need an Ain't Mad About It t-shirt. I agree with that. I might put that in the works. Now here's what we're going to do. We're just going to stuff these boats with the cream cheese. You can use your hands if you want. I'm going to use this little uh, little butter knife I got going here. And I just like to make them nice and even, just like that. How did you break the internet with queso? How did we break the internet with queso? So my buddy Doug Scheiding, also on the pro team at Traeger, uh, world champion down in San Antonio, he has a queso recipe that is in the Traeger app. And so when we shoot videos, we normally try to shoot two or three in a day. And I was talking to my video buddy and I said, hey, we need, we need something that's gonna fit in an hour. And I said, you know, we could use Doug's queso. So we shot it during kind of the beginning of the pandemic. And there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of pressure around from folks and partners on let's cook what's in your pantry. And so this queso recipe is basic. It's not meant to be your, you know, ground up, most like authentic queso. It's Velveeta, Rotel, things like that. And so I think that most of the ingredients you probably already have. So Doug blessed it and said, yeah, shoot a video on it. And we did, and we, and we, um, and we shared it on YouTube. And uh, it's pretty crazy. It's one of our most viewed videos. Uh, the Today Show just posted about it last week. Uh, there's some, <laughs> there's some co competing grill manufacturers who have fan pages who have actually told their people to stop posting the queso uh, because they posted it so much. And maybe they were just mad because it was a Traeger recipe. I don't know. But it's good, uh, and what's really cool is down at our lake house, uh, we've got a bunch of friends and houses around there, and, and every weekend when we go hang out with people, someone else is making the queso. It's been really cool to go to somebody's house and say, hey, I made the queso, and it's been fun to watch y'all's takes on it, like I'm gonna put venison in it, or I'm gonna put this in it, so I don't know. Everybody likes queso, and like I said, what's more Texan than smoked queso? Nothing. You mentioned Alabama, you a Roll Tide fan? I mentioned Alabama, am I a Roll Tide fan? That's a silly question. I'm a gigantic Alabama fan. Uh, most of Alabama coaching staff are customers of Meat Church. Been to, you know, all the big games lately for sure. So yeah, huge fan, huge fan. All right, so we've got our jalapeno boats filled up with our mixture. Now all we gotta do is wrap them in bacon. What thickness of bacon do you recommend? What thickness of bacon do I recommend? Good question, I'm about to tell you that. So here's a package of bacon. It's a great question. 
I'm going with a standard bacon, not thick bacon. And why is that? All right, so I'm going to, again, jump to my example here. This bacon is nice and crispy. It takes thick bacon too long to crisp, in my opinion. And at that point, you could start losing all of the goodness that you've got inside of here. So if you see here, I think normal bacon is awesome. There's a little trick to this too. You gotta find the bacon that works for you. My favorite bacon come, for poppers comes from our local grocery store, HEB, which is very popular in Texas. The store brand HEB bacon is the perfect thickness. And that's what this is. And so what I do is I just lay this out and I cut it in half. And then what I want you to do is take that piece of bacon and then kind of stretch it out. Of course, I got the end, so it's a little, the end piece is always a little thin. So I like to stretch it out a little bit and try not to tear it. And then you take that popper, and now you'll see the reason why I kind of cut a little bit off of that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay this bacon right on the edge. And if you lay it right on the edge of the popper and you wrap it around, now my cream cheese is completely covered. And now I have enough coverage to come back over and wrap it like that. If you do that, you don't need a toothpick. I don't want toothpicks in this. I don't want you having a party, making these poppers, and your buddy chokes on a toothpick. So let's try to keep it safe. And, and, uh, and this is exactly how I wrap this right here. So see that? I mean, again, you got to find the right bacon. You guys are probably going to go buy some bacon, and it doesn't work out like this, and you're going to get frustrated. Um, you just got to find the right one that works for you, and then you cut your pepper down to fit it, and it's going to work out great. What kind of spatula were you using? Did they see the spatula? Yeah, when you were mixing. Oh, uh, what kind of spatula did I use when mixing? Great question. I'll get that and show you. This is Thermalworks. So most of you know Thermalworks because you probably have uh, an instant read thermometer from Thermalworks, but the uh, most underrated products they have are all their, all their silicone products. So I use all of their like spatula type stuff and all their hot pads, and it's really inexpensive. I highly, highly recommend it. Another fantastic Utah company. Can if you, you didn't know, Holy Traeger is a Utah company. Can you use Holy Voodoo on the poppers? Can you use Holy Voodoo on the poppers? You can use Holy Voodoo on all the things. People keep trying to encourage me to put an everything icon beside Holy Voodoo, so yeah, absolutely. What brand of knives are you using? What brand of knives am I using? These are Messermeister, so I'll put these out here so you guys can see them. Messermeister knives made of German steel. Great people run the company. Uh, if you're a Traeger fan, you probably know Benny Kendrick, Kendrick Barbecue. Benny turned me on to Messermeister years ago. Uh, great, great people, great knives, hold an edge. Uh, I just love them. Are meat church seasonings gluten free? They're all gluten free. They're all gluten free. Uh, they're also, you know, we don't have the allergens you have to uh, claim or, you know, um, show. We have none of those in there. So not, there's not even any nuts in any of our seasonings. Not even these nuts, honey pecan. All right, we're wrapping up the last one here so we can get on to the main attraction. The producers are freaking out right now. They're like, he's not going to finish. We're going to finish. We've got extra. Never leave. No, no bacon left behind at the meat church. So let's double up on this one. OK, all right. So there you go. That's what you're left with there. You got your poppers perfectly wrapped in their little bacon blankets. But we're not done yet. Let's top them off with a little seasoning. And hey, you can mix it up. Like, you know, I was just going to put Holy Gospel on here. But you know what? I'm going to change it up. We're going to put a little of our beef rub on here. Why is that? So our beef rub's got great coarse cracked pepper in it. And I feel like putting that on there. You'll probably see there's a lot of flies around. My flies are really smart. They know what I cook. So they're here to get involved in it. And I hope they get some of this pepper and go home and have a bad night. Just kidding, dude. Are your products available in Canada? Are my products available in Canada? Yes. I highly recommend you follow Dixon Barbecue. So Dixon BBQ on Instagram. That's our distributor. And Rob at Dixon, an amazing Traeger partner, will completely take care of you. All right. These are good to go. I would normally let these uh, sit for, I don't know, 10 minutes, let the seasoning adhere. But we need to move on to the main attraction. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in, uh, put these in the grill.
get a sneak peek at some uh, beef cheek smoking in there. We agreed that we would set these to the side, but I just changed my mind. I want to eat them. What do I do to sharpen my knives, hone my knives? Um, I have, what do I do to sharpen my knives? I have a local friend that sharpens, or if I'm not around him, I use Knife Aid, the company you can ship to. That's good. I'm going to try to make sure. Okay. Cutting board question. Where did you get it? Cutting board question. This is a rosewood block. So, rosewood block on Instagram. Tyler will take care of you, and I'll even let him make you one with my logo if you like it. Can Corey have a popper? Hmm? Can Corey have a popper? Yeah. That wasn't really a question. The question was, can Corey have a popper? That wasn't really a question. Robinson Barbecue wants a popper, so I'm going to let a couple cool here for him. Okay, that was super good. Okay, all right, let's go on to barbacoa. Check the time. All right, let's have a little let's have a little barbacoa talk before we get going. Like I'd mentioned at the top, in Texas, extremely traditional meal. In fact, I've already had it from a small uh, taco joint here this week. And like I said, they, you know, if you go buy it today, someone's just braising this meat. I'd never seen anyone do this when I started doing it, and I just said, let's, let's smoke these cheeks first. Uh, and I called you know, a Hispanic buddy of mine who's an amazing cook, and I was like, look, dude, this is what I want to do. And he's like, well, yeah, do it, and this is how we do it. This is, this is how we would do it, but let's see what you can come up with. So here, beef cheek is very readily accessible. I understand for a lot of you it'll be somewhat tough for you to find, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about where you can get it. But um, I took the beef cheek, and I'm going to bring it out here, and... Uh, I decided to really aggressively trim it, smoke it, which you've got to be careful. I didn't want to go too far and dry it out. And then at the point that I felt like it had enough smoke, I decided then I would braise it and I would braise it in my own concoction. So this is a, this is a pretty simple, straightforward recipe, as a lot of mine are. Uh, but I think if you make this, you'll love it. So I'm going to bring in the cheek. And I'm going to tell you up front, beef cheek ain't pretty. So if you guys want to know what pretty is, go buy a super trim steak, something like that, tri-tip, great. But warning, when you go buy beef cheek and you pull it out of the tube, it's a mess. So I've done nothing to this, and I wanted to leave it in its natural state so that you could see just what a cow's cheek looks like. So that's the deal. Let me get another cutting board here. I'm going to trim this on another board. Okay, here we go. This is straight out of the package. This is Snake River Farms beef cheek. So we know it's going to be good. So kudos, uh, you know, to and thank you to Snake River for providing uh, this amazing, amazing meat. And I'll tell you right now, this isn't a product, if you guys, you guys are going to run to Snake River site to try to buy this, this isn't a product that you can buy on their website, and that's very common with, with uh, beef uh, you know, ranchers and, and beef companies. This isn't something you can normally buy online. They're going to be focused on brisket, steaks, cuts like that, and then they'll do other things with this. This is often a wholesale item. So where can you get this, or what are alternative cuts, because I know you're going to ask me. Barbacoa is made from beef cheeks, so I don't want you really, honestly, I don't want you looking for another cut. You can if you want, but that's not barbacoa. Barbacoa comes from beef cheeks. Where can you get it? Find a local Mexican market and they'll be able to get it for you. If you live in Texas, obviously you're gonna be able to find it. It's at every, literally every grocery store. But if you unfortunately live like in the Northeast or something like that and, and somewhere that just doesn't carry it, then I would find a Mexican market and ask around and you should be able to find it. Uh, this is three pounds and typically this is how it comes. There's normally two pieces and there's gonna be a lot of waste. From here down it is honestly completely worthless. So I'm going to do what I said earlier. I'm going to go with some pretty aggressive trimming. A lot of friends I know will leave a fair amount of fat and they'll cook it with the fat because they think the fat is the flavor in the cook, and that's okay. I'm going to pull most of it out, and here's why. The first time I had it, I told you I didn't like it. Well, here's why. I figured out over time, I took a big bite and it had a bunch of fat in it, and that's kind of common. I think it was a lazy restaurant owner 
I wasn't a big fan of what I got. Uh, but then after I started to get it from other places, I fell in love with it, you know, and here we are. So after I trim this, we're going to be left with what I call an A cheek and a B cheek. Uh, and this is the A cheek. This, and why do we call that? I learned that from my buddy Evan Leroy down in Austin. But this piece right here is a really good piece of meat. In fact, I could cook it whole and, and honestly, I could slice it like brisket and probably fool you on what it is. There is so much flavor in this meat. It's amazing. You don't have to do a whole lot to it. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a sharp knife and I'm going to start trimming. And this is the worst part of this lesson. This is trial and error. You know, if you guys sitting at home, you're just going to have to get this and trim away what doesn't look like meat. And that's what it comes down to. So I've done this a ton and I'm going to tell you right now, you need a sharp knife because trim a few cheeks with a knife and this is going to be dull and then you're going to be hating life. So you need to, you need to start with a really sharp knife. And I did this, I was self-taught. No one showed me. So if it, if it hung off, I cut it off. I'm going to go ahead and separate this piece because it's just barely hanging on. That's kind of, these two are what we're going to call our B cheek. So we're going to focus on our A cheek and it's already starting to look better and we're going to trim all the excess off. This is honestly like fairly difficult to teach you. So you're just, you're, again, you're going to have to get this and, and just tr kind of try it out, a little trial and error, and you'll, you'll figure it out. Hey, people are asking what uh, temperature for the poppers. Oh, poppers, what question? Great question. I didn't even tell you what, what temperature to cook those at. So all these apps today are in the Traeger, all these recipes are in the Traeger app or TraegerGrills.com. The recipe there shows to put the poppers on a lower temperature smoke for a while and then put them, move them over to 375 for like 30 minutes. My super simple way is two, 250 to 275 for 90 minutes depending on the size. So we're at, um, the, these are rocking over here. Uh, they, these are rocking at 250 today and they're just over 90 minutes and they look perfect. And so that's kind of my go-to. 250 is high as 275. I don't like to go higher because the cream cheese can kind of come out. But that's that's what I like to do. You guys have some uh, you have some options with that. You can certainly go lower, and if you do, then you crank it up at the end to crisp up the bacon. But I think 250 until the bacon looks just right will take you to the promised land. All right, so I'm kind of laying this flat and carving this fat out of here. I just know that's how the fat lays on this from experience. And you can kind of feel this stuff, and you can feel there's just like, it's a mess. That's the best way to describe it. This stuff is a mess. Is beef cheek expensive? Is beef cheek expensive? It's like six bucks a pound. There are no cheap cuts of beef anymore. This used to be very cheap, and then it became cool, and it's not cheap anymore. So there's not too many cheap cuts on a cow anymore. I mean, it's not that crazy money, but. Okay, so there, there is what I'm going to call our A cheek. And then I'm going to do a little bit of trim over here on these other two pieces, and we'll call that good. And I'm kind of laying my knife at a, you know, on a bias, like at a 45, to try to get some of that fat off. Almost there. What other questions we got while I do this? Can you grind the excess cheek for burgers or sausage? Can you grind the excess cheek? I'm gonna, absolutely. You, I mean, I recommend that all of you get a grinder. If you're into barbecue, you should get a grinder. Um, I use made with meat products. Uh, they're meat on Instagram. Get a grinder and any, if you're doing, whether you're doing a brisket, you're, you know, cutting this barbacoa, whatever the case is, don't throw your meat in the garbage. Grind it up and make epic hamburgers out of it. What's the shelf life on your rubs? What's the shelf life on my rubs? Uh, you know, so they don't, rub seasoning doesn't expire. It just loses its, its uh, kind of potency, I guess I would call it. And I mean, if I ha there are some countries where I have to declare an expiration date and we say it's in three years. My guidance is they're best used within a year. But if you buy a bottle of seasoning and you don't use it within a year, you need to cook more. I'm just being honest with you. So here you go. I told you this stuff ain't sexy. It is what it is. It's okay. Oh, a little piece left here. There we go. A cheek and the leftovers. It's all going to be good. Oh, hang, excuse me just one second. Got to hand these to my trusty. Okay. 
happens if you over trim or take too much off? What happens if you over trim? Just like with anything, you know, I would trim slower uh, because you can always take away more, but you can't add back. You know, if you take away more, it's just something you can't cook. That's all. So if I got aggressive, like this is all fat. There's nothing, we didn't miss too much of that. All right, let's season this stuff. I'm gonna season it with our beef rub, holy cow. We have some other options. Uh, you can use our fajita seasoning, which is very good on barbacoa. Uh, you can use Traeger's prime rib rub. You can use just whatever your favorite seasoning is, but what should the flavor profile be? In Texas, beef is a lot of salt and pepper, which is what holy cow is. And then I've got a little bit of garlic in it. So I want to, that's a, that's a manly seasoning. I want something with some flavor. So when I go beef, it's always our holy cow. Uh, you, again, you could use our fajita, you could even use our holy gospel, but to me, this is the most simple rub I have, and this is all you need. We're gonna let this stuff adhere. I didn't put any binder on it. You, forget, you know, what is a binder? A binder is like if you put some sort of liquid on the meat to help the seasoning adhere. I don't usually use binders because I don't think they're needed. Sometimes I use it on pork. Why is that? Well, watch this. So I just put the seasoning straight on the meat and watch, and I pick it up, nothing fell off of it. So I'm not putting a binder on it. But if you want to put olive oil or uh, whatever, Worcestershire sauce, knock yourself out. Not mad about that at all. Okay. Is this similar to oxtail in terms of taste? Question, is this similar to oxtail? I think so. Uh, we serve tail, oxtail tacos at some festivals and stuff. I think it is very similar. I mean, it's opposite ends of the cow, but yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and then I'm gonna talk to you about what I do just because there's a lot of flies out here and I'd like to just get it going. I'm gonna put these on the bottom shelf of my Timberline. So let's talk about the cook process. Let me hand you that. Okay. So here's how we're gonna cook this barbacoa. I like, um, you know, I mentioned that, that usually people just braise it. I want to add the smoke element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my Traeger at 225 super smoke. You can go higher, you can go 250, you can go 275, those work fine. But anytime I can get super smoke, I'd try to take advantage of that. And that feature is available up to 225 degrees. So I'd love to put this grill on 225 super smoke, which is what this is on, and throw those cheeks in. The bigger cheek can take about two hours smoke. The smaller pieces will be cooked way quicker than that. So using your instant read thermometer, what I would do is probe right in the middle of those cheeks. And I don't really want to go more than like say 165, 170 internal temperature, kind of the same thing you do with a brisket. And at that point with a brisket, you wrap it up and move on. Um, with with our cheeks, that's kind of the same thing. When they reach that 165 mark, then we're ready to put them in the braise and then let them roll from there. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna show you now. I've got three big cheeks that have been in the smoke for a couple hours. They have great color on them and it's time to put them in a braise mixture. So I don't like to use grilling gloves. We get this question a lot. I put on a cotton glove, a string glove, and then I just pull a, a, a latex glove over the top. And this allows me to handle hot stuff. So here you can see some cheeks that have great, great color, great smoke. You can see that those things have, they've created amazing bark, like a brisket. Now this is what I'm looking for. You know, while I told you to look uh, for 165 degrees internal, let me check these. This one's 160. You know, I'm visual cues first. So you're looking at this, you know, you're looking for this bark. You're, you're, you're wanting the dark color. Uh, I mean, you can pretty well tell. Um, you know, we didn't smoke any smaller pieces for this stage, but that stuff is gonna, you know, crisp up, darken up a lot quicker. So use your eyes, you know, get the visual cues, and then use, um, use your instant read kind of as uh, your sanity check to just make sure you're kind of where it needs to be. You know, I don't want you guys to overcook this. I don't want you to dry it out. I don't want you to cook this to like 200 degrees and it, and it um, take on too much smoke. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in a half pan. Okay. 
And now it's time to braise them. All right, let's see. I'm gonna turn our ranger down just, just a little bit. Because those poppers are pretty well done. All right, so this is, again, I came up with this on my own. I wanna braise this stuff. What should I braise it in? What should I put in it? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with some beef broth you know, a broth or a stock, whatever you like. You can do your own thing. Some people use water and put stuff in it. Um, what I'm gonna do is just kind of pour some beef broth. Like I'm putting in like, I don't know, a quarter inch. Because as these cheeks cook, they're gonna push moisture out of them and you're gonna create more jus in the pan, just like if you're cooking a brisket and this pan's gonna capture it all. So you don't need much. I'm just, again, trying to braise it. So put a bit of liquid in it. And then what I like to do is I'm gonna you know use some kind of traditional Texas flavors, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, onions and garlic uh, in in the braise because I just think those flavors are, are complementary of of what we're doing. So I'm gonna take big pieces of onion, and I'm just gonna set them around um, around the cheeks. All right, I'm gonna throw some onion in here, like I said. And I've got some garlic. These are whole garlic cloves. You can never have too much garlic. Okay. And so we're gonna go back in with this. So here's the deal. This is where I want you to pull your head out of the recipe and just think about what you're doing a little bit. I can throw this back in my Traeger. We were in at 225. I can cover this with foil. And in about four hours, this stuff is probably, three to four hours, this stuff's gonna be fork tender. But let's say you wanna have this for breakfast. Well, I don't wanna wake up at two in the morning to do that. So frequently what I do is I'll put the smoke on the step one. I'll do that in the evening. And then the reason I love a Traeger is I can drop this Traeger to 195 degrees, 200 degrees, cover it in foil, and just let it ride all night. It's barely going to use any pellets. This meat's going to be fork tender, uh, and it, it's not going to overcook. And it's super easy. So again, you never catch me cooking with a crock pot, but think about smoking this stuff and then putting it in your crock pot and just letting it ride all night. That's what, that's what a lot of people would do. Um, another thing you can do, you know, when we throw this in, I actually like to put I actually like to put this in uncovered if I'm going to be up for a while and after an hour or two flip these cheeks and let the other side get some smoke uh, and then cover it at some point. But again, you want to keep it super simple. Smoke these for two hours, put them in the pan, cover it with foil, put it back in. If you're going to let it rot on at 200, if you want them cooked as quick as possible, you can crank the temperature up. You can go 250, 275, you can go 325. You're, you're not going to hurt it because again, you're braising it and once they're tender, uh, you know, we'll move on to the next step and show you what that's like. So it's, it's really that simple. So back in we go. Okay, so we pulled, we pulled that cheek off at 165 degrees to put it in that braised liquid. So that's really where when we put them in the pan. That's usually what we're shooting for. How what? How old are you? People are dying to know how tall I am. Seven foot six. All right. Before I pull out this cheek, I'm going to grab some poppers so they start to cool off because I want to eat them. And these are filled with cream cheese. And if I pull them off at the last minute to take the ridiculous over over exaggerated bite, I'm gonna burn my mouth off. question was what kind of onion did I use? I just used a white onion. How many people will this feed? How many people will the cheek feed? That's a good question. That one package of cheek probably feed six to eight people. Now that I'm leaving these on here a little bit longer, the cheese is starting to pop out just a little bit. But that's okay. 
And yes, I could use a spatula, but I'm trying to get a workout in here. Do you use the Traeger Probe and Traeger App? Question is, do I use the Traeger Probe and the Traeger app? I live on the Traeger app. I use it all the time for a bunch. I use it for the recipes. I use it to control my grills. Um, do I use the, the Traeger Probe? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, I did not use the Probe this time, uh, which I have outside of the grill. Uh, but yeah, I do use it during the shot. Especially if I'm cooking a big meat. If I'm cooking a big meat, I'm going to have a, a probe in. Uh, checking where it's at, sending me alerts to my app. I mean, I'm a huge fan of it, absolutely. Okay, let's move all these over here. All right, I'm going to put another glove on because I'm going to pull the cheek out, show you what it looks like. And we're going to make tacos. So here's where we are. Now you can see, uh, you can see all the, there's a ton of garlic in this one, ton of onions. Uh, you know that stuff probably tastes amazing. But all of this cheek, it's really, really, you know, really, really tender. I mean, super tender. And this is what we're looking for right here. I'm not going to drop it down on the board quite yet, um, but I just want to show you this. I mean, this is some of the most rich meat you could ever eat. And you see how that just pulls apart? That's the Traeger, Traeger magic right there. That's what you're looking for. I mean, this is unbelievable. And we know Snake River Farms Wagyu beef is gonna be unreal too, so there we go. So normally I'll shred this in a bowl. I don't have an extra bowl here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna lay, um, I'll go ahead and just make a pile and then we'll make tacos out of it. And this stuff will hold for a long time. I mean, you, you could have your Traeger, you could take your Traeger to keep warm and you could just let this meat sit in this pan. You're not gonna hurt it, because again, you're, you're wanting it to fall apart like we're getting right here. This is what you're looking for. So you're, you're not gonna hurt it if you let it sit you know, any longer. So we're gonna make a big pile here. I'll tell you, I'm a big fan of eating directly off the cutting board, especially with our family. Uh, look at this, by the way, here's your smaller pieces. To me, that, you know, I like to eat family style. Why do you call it meat church? To bring people together to make good memories around, around amazing food. That's what we're all about. Traeger's the same way. We got room at the table for everybody. So I would love nothing more than just to plate this on a board and have everybody stand around the board and just eat it right here till it's gone. We don't need plates, to be honest with you. I might pull a little onion out in case somebody wants some of that. Someone said, can you add other meats to this like the tongue? Can you add other meats to this like the tongue? You absolutely can cook lingua in the same method. I mean, I would boil the tongue first so that you can get all of the uh, taste bud stuff peeled off, uh, but you absolutely can use the same technique. So we talked earlier about, about uh, oxtail. Uh, lingua is the same way. And so I'm kind of known for from going from what I call, uh, you know, all ends of the cow. And I, so if you come to a food festival, if you come to like, Chefs for Farmers, we're known to cook the unique stuff, the heart, oxtail, uh, shins, whatever. So yeah, you can, you can apply the same technique to other parts of anything, any, any kind of meat you want to go with. The hiccups. All right, so I've got fresh corn tortillas. So you should do this on corn, not flour. You can use flour if that's what you want to do. And if I'm going on corn, I'm often doubling them up. Uh, and I would like to, I would like to heat these up on, on like plancha. So I'd like to put the plate in the ranger and heat these up. But I wasn't going to roll two rangers out here today, so we're just going to, we're just going to go with this for now. Okay. Total braise time for the cheek. Total braise time for the cheek. If you're staying at 250, it's going to be fork tender, pull, pull, up, pull apart tender, and 
you know, four or five hours. Uh, again, you can crank the temp higher if you need it done quicker. Or, you know, like I said, I'm a big fan of pulling your head out of the recipe. Matt says do this, this, this. Back up and say, when do I need it? Lower or raise my temperature uh, to the extent you can to adjust for that. So you could get it done quicker, you could go slower. I'm telling you the number one way to do this is at night, on a Friday night, I'm gonna put these on for two hours. I'm gonna put them in the pan until I go to bed open with all this mixture. Then I'm gonna cover it in foil. I'm gonna put my Traeger on 200 degrees and I'm gonna go to bed and wake up and have the most epic breakfast ready. It's already ready to go, don't have to do anything. All right, in case my uh, NFL buddies are watching, they often make fun of if I don't put enough meat on tacos. So let's make sure we get enough meat. This stuff is way hot. Oh, we're going to need more cheek. This recipe is pretty, you know, pretty near and dear to me. We started serving it at, at festivals. And last year, or I guess this year before last, I had a uh, a Hispanic lady walk up to us at Smoked Fort Worth in very broken English. She said, that's the best barbacoa I've ever had in my life. And that meant more to me than probably any compliment I've ever gotten. So I thought that was super cool. All right, lots of meat on these. Now, the uh, traditional way to serve these in Texas is with cilantro and white onions and cotija cheese if you want it. Uh, you can put salsas and picos and things like that on it. But this, is, this right here, when you order it, they're gonna say, do you, want, do you want cilantro and onions? And the answer is yes, I want cilantro and onions. So this is how it comes. Now from here, you can do something different you know, if you want. It's totally fine, dress it up. Put your salsas, picos on it. You know, we like to do stuff like that, but I'm, I'm trying to stick to like what's super traditional and just show you how it comes. So that's chopped white onion. Uh, this is um, chopped cilantro. Some people like Robinson Barbecue don't like cilantro, they're wrong. Okay, so there's that. Someone did ask, uh, which brought me into this, Skill, can you admit Robinson's brisket has made you jealous? That's a lie. That's Someone asked, can I admit Robinson's barbecue or brisket made me jealous? No. I mean, like, I'm like Darth Vader, and he's like Anakin, or maybe that's who, you know, whatever. So I, I, mean, I taught the guy, all right? All right, this is cotija cheese. Really fresh, just crumbled. I'm going to cover it in that. So this cutting board is looking mighty fine before we, you know, before we do anything else. So, you know, you're going to ask me, can I put this and that on it? Yes, you make it yours. You know, you do what you want to do. Um, you know, I've got some some more limes here that I'm gonna cut up. And I like to put a little squeeze of lime, that's your call, if you wanna do that or not. You don't have to, but that's what I like. Okay, I'm liking how this turned out, I'm not gonna lie. So here's jalapeno popper. Let's, see, let's show this one. So you see the bacon wrapped all the way around, didn't lose anything out of it, great looking bite. To me, it goes great together. This goes with anything. That's a hot one. Woo. It's okay. Mm. We're even doing good on time. That means I can take questions. Wash it down with a little Tito's. All right, let's see how we did. Here we go. There's your exaggerated bite, Amanda. <clears throat> That's unreal. So I'm talking my mouthful and I don't care. This meat is so rich. We didn't do a whole lot. We put holy cow on it. <clears throat> you know, we, we cooked it at a low temperature. We braised it and just a beefy mixture. We didn't do anything crazy to it. Garlic and onions. And then we added cilantro onions 
a um, little bit of lime juice, and it was unbelievable. I'm telling you, I've never had anyone say they don't like this. And if people say they don't like barbacoa, they've never had this. As they say, ain't mad about it. Questions? Questions? Get them in the comments. Ask me anything other than why won't customer service call me back. That's not what this is for. Ask me a cooking question. What's a good wood to smoke turkey with? What's a good wood to smoke turkey with? <clears throat> I like hickory or pecan. Pecan's probably my number one. It's a little less smoky than hickory, and it'll help your bird turn out like really pretty. You can add a little fruit wood to it if you want to put like a apple or cherry pellet in uh, with the pecan. I find that's really good, but I don't want to go anything heavy, even though I said, you know, I like oak here in Texas as well as hickory, like we mentioned. I don't like to go heavy oak, Texas beef, things like that on poultry, so a little bit lighter. Brisket questions. How do you keep it moist and develop a bark? What are your tricks and tips for developing a great bark? What are my tips and tricks for developing bark on brisket? All right, I'm not trying to push anything. Go to the Meat Church YouTube channel and watch the week day brisket recipe where we cook a brisket overnight into the next day and just look at the bark it shows you step by step and it's amazing slow down your cook you know use our holy cow it's a beefy rub that develops great bark cook it fat side up i don't want to hear people saying oh it's heat source in the middle on a traeger can't do it i cook all my briskets fat side up and they turn out amazing move it up a shelf if you want slow down your cook lower temperature you know the best briskets aren't cooked in eight hours. The best briskets are at least 12 hours, if not longer. So lower your temperature, cook it longer. Watch that YouTube video. And I get emails literally every day saying, hey, I did that weekday brisket and it was the best I ever had. So try that. What's your favorite meal to cook? What's my favorite meal to cook? Chicken fried steak. Just bought the Fab Five. What would you recommend to season try tip? I can't stop eating. <clears throat> That's the next question. Just bought the Fab Five. What would you recommend to season tri-tip? Either Holy Cow or Beef Rub, or you should also try our Holy Gospel, which Holy Gospel is these two rubs mixed, not 50-50. So it's like Holy Cow with a little sweetness in it, and it's very good on tri-tip, or steak in general. Are you really going to stand there and eat a whole taco and not let Corey have one? Am I going to stand here and eat a whole taco and not let Corey have one? Yep. He's already been disrespectful enough during this broadcast. I don't want his head to get too big. What's a good way Y'all should go follow him, Robinson BBQ. He posts several of my food photos that, that help his account grow. Pretty good dude. This is his ranger. He's not, you know, good dude. He helps me out a lot. Give him, go, you, you guys go follow him, please. Do me a solid. Who cooked the barbacoa? Yeah. What's a good way to smoke venison roast? Hmm. What's a good way to smoke venison roast? That's a really funny question because we shot a venison rib rack video here today. I smoke it at 250 because it's super lean. And then I put a little, I mean, it's a rib rack, so it's not exactly, that's technically a roast. It may not be what you're asking, but you got to be careful because venison's really lean and you can dry it out really easily. So um, I'm about to release this video and you guys can watch that. But venison off Traeger is amazing. What's the best rub for chicken from Peter? Best rub for chicken from Meat Church would probably be Holy Voodoo. Holy Gospel is also really good. I'm going to keep eating. Do you do any lessons from your home? Do I do lessons from my home? We teach classes right here. This is a teaching kitchen. Not many people I know build a kitchen this big in their backyard. And right over here is where all the students sit. Obviously, due to you know the crappy world we live in right now with COVID, we're not doing it. It's on hold. I just can't spread people out far enough because uh, this is literally my backyard. It's not huge. So they're on hold until we get past that. But yeah, I mean, teaching is what I'm passionate about. People come from around the world to sit in this kitchen and learn barbecue, and that's what we love doing. It's a ton of fun, so we can't wait for this to be over. What's your favorite seasoning and why? What's my favorite seasoning? I'm going to answer that two ways. Holy cow and honey hog are what we took on Barbecue Pitmasters in uh, 2014. And those are the OGs, so those have a special place in my heart. Uh, I can use those two rubs on just about anything I cook. Honey hog, straight in your hand, tough to beat. So, uh, but currently, you know, Holy Voodoo is like the, I think, the undisputed champion of barbecue seasonings right now. And I get to find anything it's not good on. I'm not being cocky. It's just, that's just what people say. They like on different things. It's amazing on chicken wings. So that one's pretty tough to beat.
Last question. I'm going to make your queso dip this weekend. What meat do you prefer, spicy sausage, and have you used chorizo? The question is, I'm going to make the queso this weekend. What meat do we prefer, and have we, have we tried chorizo or spicy stuff? Yeah, so the recipe's in the Trigger app. I also made a variant on meatchurch.com. And in my variant, I double the meat. Uh, I think it needs at least two pounds of ground meat. And I would recommend you do something a little spicy. It's not going to turn, it's not going to make the queso hot because there's, there's a bunch of cheese and rotel and everything else in it. Chorizo in it is amazing. Ground venison in it is amazing. If you're just buying store-bought stuff, the hot breakfast sausage is really good that Doug um, said to use. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of that as well. But go get yourself a tube of hot breakfast sausage and one or two tubes of chorizo and throw that in there. And, and to me, you're going to get a, you know, a little Tex-Mex bite and it's going to be super good. Stuff's, it's, it's awesome. But you can put whatever you want in it. I mean, guys, smoke a brisket this weekend. You know, chop up the extra brisket, throw it in there, make it hearty, put a ton of meat in it. I mean, I want to scoop that chip in there and have a. I want to have a meal. So, what else we got? That's it. Man, dead on hour. Well, hey, appreciate y'all coming to my backyard. Uh, I'm already booked for another one in a month from now. We're going to do my famous pork belly. So excited to have you guys come on and do that. Um, Eduardo Garcia did his pork belly a few weeks ago, which I thought was amazing. Mine's a little bit different. So check back in for Trigger Kitchen Live in about a month. And uh, I'll be doing that again early. In, it's not quite a month away. It's uh, early in September. Um, stick around or head over to Instagram. Uh, I'm going to go live with Chad Ward in about 15 minutes. We're going to join up with the old boy. He's going to fire up some cocktails and we're going to have a real casual talk about what we did today uh, so you can come hop over on the live and ask us more questions you know like i said earlier follow me on instagram at meat church uh, that's where i i love to post what i do and tell you how i did it just kind of give it to you um, that's what we're all about so i'm just a normal dude cooking in my backyard hoping to inspire you to do the same thing uh, for your family but again thank you to traeger um, for allowing us to do this thank you to snake river farms for providing uh, this amazing meat. Thanks to all of you guys for taking time out on your Thursday night. Can't wait to see you guys again in a couple weeks. Cheers. Hope you guys make this. Please make this. Make these. Tag me on Instagram so I can see you sharing it for your friends and family. Um, the reason I do this is for you to later say I did this and my friend said it was the best XYZ I ever made uh, and that would totally make my day. So uh, please share this and tag me in it. Let me know how it turned out. Thank you guys, uh, and we'll see you here in a few weeks for Pork Belly.